a sucker got to go ten thousand dollars. Remember they used to have three and four. I don't think they make those kind for that kind of money anymore. Don on to do the introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, if it wasn't for the sponsors of the wrestling card, you'd never get to see them on TV. So at the request of our our very wonderful sponsors who make these programs possible, that they asked me to create a sell-off crowd to put the match on TV, and we're going to break precedent and do this because usually the world champion never appears on a on a television, but because this is Ric Flair's first trip to the Pacific Post, he okayed it tonight for the one and only time. So ladies and gentlemen, the first, this event will be the best two out of three falls, our one hour time limit for the World's Heavyweight Championship. Introducing there in this corner, 226 pounds from Florida, Hacksaw Sawyer. This time, a big pleasure in introducing the world heavyweight champion, 240 pounds from Minneapolis, who has been one of the most sensational cards in the East for several years, Ric Flair. And Buddy Rose is coming down to ringside. Hack, Hack, you'll have to give me that belt. Hack to uh, turn the Pacific Coast belt over to me, which he holds, because if he should win this world championship tonight, we'll have to have a tournament for the Northwest Regional belt. And uh, I believe that at this Hack Sawyer, I have great pride in this boy because he will certainly come along and he could easily win the world heavyweight championship. What do you want? a special announcement to make. And that is this. Tuesday night, this Tuesday night, you got a Portland special. Now I asked to wrestle Ric Flair for the World's Heavyweight Championship tonight, and Hack Sawyer got the shot. So, I would like to meet the winner of this match Tuesday night in the Portland Sports Arena. But, but, I'm going on record as to say this. If you win, I'll wrestle you, and if you win, I'll wrestle you. But, when I win that title Tuesday night, I will wrestle in Seattle, I'll wrestle in Salem, I'll wrestle in Eugene. I will make my home here, then I will go around the world and defend the title. But if I lose, if I lost that match Tuesday night, if I don't walk out of the ring with the World's Heavyweight Championship around my waist, I'll leave the Northwest. Let's see what Don Owen has to say. Let me say one thing to you. Go home and start packing. If it's going to be a new There's one thing I didn't add to this. I would like to have my own referee. Well, we will have to see what becomes of that. Right now, we've got the excitement of world championship action right now. And there it is. You think it's pretty? Well, we can't get a real good shot of it, of course. But I'll tell you this, and that little trinket in income is worth at least a quarter of a million dollars a year to the man who holds it. Some say a half a million dollars. Because of the fact that you are always wrestling, you are the highest percentage paid wrestler in pro wrestling in the world. When you hold that title,
interesting situation. Both these wrestlers like to put their man away with the figure four leg lock. It is Ric Flair's favorite hold. It is also Hack Sawyer's hold. And Hack has told me, and he mentioned that last week, that having it as my favorite hold, I have learned the counter to it. If you want something to put men away, you yourself have to know how to get out of it. Into the ropes. Our first lockup, our first break, and it's clean. Lock up on the ropes. And a clean break. Go behind, body lock. Drops him, trying to find a handle. Rick Flair, unable to come up with a hold. Rick Flair and the Playboy started about the same time. They entered wrestling both in Minnesota. Matt Sarge showing his agility. They went different ways about seven years ago. Those, of course, came to the West Coast, to Oregon. Flair went to the East. Both ruled the roost for all this time. Both, of course, peroxide blondes, as you know. Both very fancy in some of their gear. Both making a lot of money and spending a lot of money. Side headlock. Hot Sawyer with the hold. Wall to wall. And six feet tall, the wrestling pins. Here at the Portland Sports Arena. 289 4222, the number to call for the Tuesday night reservations. You can call tomorrow. Tomorrow and Tuesday, but chances are they'll be gone by tomorrow. If you call Tuesday, you'll probably be too late. Flea market opens at 8 o'clock in the morning, closes about 3 tomorrow afternoon. During those hours, you can come out back and forth. The reverse on the hip drop. Hack Sawyer. Making a good move. Their nose to nose and talking. The insult slap from the world champ. Axos not going to like it. corner. They worked themselves off the ropes. They're locked up. Side headlock. Go behind. Front forward trip. Trying to find a headlock. Couldn't find it. Where is Dick? Uh, Sawyer dropped him. <laughs> he left to the midsection. Good old chop. No whip. Caught him with an elbow. I'm getting some trouble now. Turnbuckle treatment. Yeah. 
Going to go up on a belly to belly suplex. Has him in the air. Nailed him. He'll cover him with the body press. Hooks the outside leg and he gets out of it. That looked like first ball right there. Side by side. Gets him the sit out backbreaker. Some places call the atomic drop. Now covers with the body press hook in the outside leg. He gets the arm outside the rope. The arm is outside the rope. Stop that count. Front headlock and tightening down on it. Frank Bonham are calling the action for you on Portland Wrestling. Glad you're with us tonight. Maybe this is what I have been feeling. The excitement of the last few weeks. The world champion defending his title against one of the most popular champions ever in the Northwest. A full house watching it. Coming to you, bringing it to you on old Channel 12. That headlock for Claire. in the midsection. Now going upstairs to the head. Max Sawyer working on Flair. And the crowd's going wild. Upside down. Out of the corner, Flair ripped. And ripped hard. Can he put him away? Throw the throw back drop. Max Sawyer's got it working. Sawyer's got the world champion in trouble. Can he get a pin? Down to two, and that's all. Grabs the front, headlock or front chancery. It's a chancery, the challenger for the world title. Taken in a corner, he had quite a flurry there, but unable to put the champ away. Flair. Let loose. Suddenly comes in to the corner after a dazed. Max Sawyer. That's off and flying out with an elbow smash of his own. They are trading blows. They are swinging away toe to toe and nose to nose. Flair punished on the rope. He catches him with a cobra clutch. He catches him with a sleeper. Oh, what a shocker this is. Flair got out of it. He rolls him up with a small package. He's taking over with a small package. Two, three. The champion wins the first ball. What a masterful move. Whew. What action, but a champion winning the first ball. How much? How much did Hacksaw learn about his opponent? We know he's been watching tapes, what he could. The bell rings, the bell rings. And we 
we are ready for second fall action. And let's face it, do or die for Hacksaw Sawyer. One of the many cliches that we can borrow from other sports. Never say die, Hacksaw Sawyer. How about this one? For Hacksaw, there's no tomorrow. And that is indeed true in this situation. He has lost the first ball to win the heavyweight championship of the world. He has to win two straight balls now against a very, very talented and tough Ric Flair. But we've seen him do tough things before. Battling for the top wrist lock. Flair seems to have it. No, he's coming back against it. Coming back. And turns it into a side headlock. Max Sawyer is lifted, dropped. He keeps the hold. It's your boy, Rick Flair, brought right over the top. 289 42 22, the number to call. Normally that number is answered is man or woman <laughs> on Sundays and Tuesdays. I would say that by Tuesday, probably all the ringside seats will be gone. You can try if you want to, but I'd call that number tomorrow or better yet, come out to the flea market. Go to the concession stand because you can buy your ticket and then you get it right away. When you come out here Tuesday night, you don't have to stand in line. You make telephone reservations, they must be picked up no later than 8 o'clock. I will go on sale to the general public. They're not picked up by 8. Nails him with a flying tackle across. Leapfrog by Flair. Flying body press. He might have him. Not quite. Sandy Barr took a bump. Oh, almost. Fine body press. Elbow smash to the ribs. Judo chop. Tell you it's wild they're here tonight. We're not a Billy Rancher in the end. Holy God's jam section. It is wild. Elbow smash. Back of the head. Uppercut. The young Floridian is down. Flair going to try to put him away. Knee drop. Hacksaw. Looks like he has had it. One, two, kicks out of it. Kicked out just barely in time. He goes in behind. Sit out backbreaker on Flair. He flipped all the way up from behind. Sit out to his back. Forearm smashes back of the head. A whip. You want to catch him with a shoulder throw backdrop. Blair came up short, and they both bang. Blair's favoring the left arm. And trying to get Blair in the grapevine. He's got him in an abdominal stretch. Flair saying no, refusing to submit. Hacksaw stretching him out. Flair able to pull him over the top. Hacksaw getting out of the way of that elbow drop. And that was right missing from Flair, but not Hacksaw's. His landed.
Ric Flair, the most colorful world champion in decades, and some say maybe the most talented. Whether he's better than Funk, Frisco, whoa! Harley Race, yet to be seen, only a track record. To prove how good you are, Sire is down on the concrete. He's out on his side. Flair going out after him. Flair outside the ring, giving him punishment. Taking him into the steel ring post. Flair working on the challenger outside the ring. And I'll tell you something that shows that Flair is getting worried about this guy. He's trying to take care of business wherever he has to. Rick Flair has one fall up, but he is not cocky, I don't think, but feeling he's got this man nailed. Shoulder breaker. Covers him with a body press, and that could be it. No! Blair thought Sherry had two count, or three count, rather. Sota. One, two, and he kicks out again. Rick Blair. Three times he is nearly nailed. The challenger. Into the ropes. Over the top. You got him with a victory roll. Can he get the pin? No, he cannot. Player able to kick out of it. We are in second fall action. A chance. Player. Is pulled to the mat in a backslide, nearly the count of three. Quick to the midsection, elbow smash, top of the head. Remember, Buddy Rose has challenged the winner of this match. We haven't heard if Don Owen has given it to him. If we got the winner, it'd be the last we'd see a Rhodes if we understand everything right. We'll go into that more later. Uh, I'll tell you, these two guys are groggy. They are really expending some energy. Hacksaw's got to be worried to not get disqualified. Takes him out of the corner. No, it's reversed. It's Hacksaw, whipped hard into the corner. The heavyweight champion of the world, Ric Flair. Working on him, elbow smash. And here's the figure four now. He got kicked off on it. The figure four is what the champ likes to put his opponent's away with, and it's what he's trying to put on. This is where Hacksaw said he had a counter to it. Let's see if he can give it. He small packages him. Two, three. Sawyer wins the second fall. Hacksaw Sawyer with a brilliant 
small package after he had successfully defended against the player, putting on the we're going to run down the Billy Rancher. Excitement in the air, like a rock and roll jam section. Or a grand old Opry, or whatever. Sports arena, wall to wall. And I'll tell you, you could tell by some 